had died. Okay? So Josephus says Eliyahu did not die, he just disappeared. Josephus says Elijah disappeared. Does the word say out Elijah disappeared? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. He still has not been found. He's still on the earth with brother John for 2,700 years and no one even knows where to look for him. Wow. And even if you do look for him, you're not going to find him. Right. Wow. But this John and this Eliyahu are going to appear right before the great and dreadful day of Yahweh and they're going to begin to prophesy in the great tribulation. Wow. Think about that. You talk about Yahweh's hand and protection upon you. Eliyahu was picked up bodily and placed in a different location. Now, we see the same thing, and I'll close with this, and I'll wind this down, I think. Can I hear a good amen? Amen. Ezekiel, Yechezkel 3.12. Is there precedent for this? Yes, of course. It was happening to Eliyahu all the time. It happened to Philip in Acts chapter 8. But it also happened to Ezekiel. Mm -hmm. It's going to happen to you. When hundreds of millions of born-again Nazarene Israelites are caught up in the clouds, your families and your relatives and your cousins are going to go, which way did he go? Which way did he go? They're going to, and they're going to be convinced that you're either dead, no, or ra are raptured in the rapture. No, neither. Neither dead or raptured. Taken up to be preserved on the earth. Right. Neither dead or raptured. When Yeshua comes, you're not going to be dead or raptured. You're going to be taken up to be, what, transported and preserved on the earth. Same thing happened with Eliyahu. That's why he was able to write a, a parchment to Melech Yehoram. Yehoram. Some seven years after his alleged trip to the third heaven. Then the Ruach took me up, verse 12, Ezekiel 3, 12. And I heard behind me a voice of great rushing saying, Blessed be the Tiferet of Yahweh from his place. I heard also the noise of the wings of the living creatures touching one another, the noise of the wheels behind them, and the noise of a great rushing. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Verse 12, yeah. The Ruach took me up. There it is. Ezekiel 3.12. E Ezekiel was taken up to a place where he heard rushing. He heard wings of living creatures. He, he saw wings that touched one another. He heard the noise of wheels and behind him and beside him. But look at verse 12. The Ruach took me up. This wasn't in heaven and this wasn't on earth. You see that? He was taken to a different location. Hello? I said he was, he was not taken to heaven. And he was not taken to another place on earth. He was taken to a different location to see things. The Ruach took me up. Okay. So Eliyahu and Yochanan are still alive. Yahweh has hidden them in a secret location, protected by the power of Yahweh until the appointed time when they will be sent with the mission that Yahweh has prepared for them. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. These are the two olive trees, the two anointed ones, spoken about in Scripture. Don't turn there. Revelation 11.3. Gilead 11.3. I will give power to my two witnesses. They will prophesy three and a half years. Verse 4. These are the two olive eight seen, the two mineral rope, who stand before the Eloha of the Olam. Meaning, these two olive trees, these two menorahs, were already alive because they were already standing before Yahweh. They wouldn't show up out of thin air. They were already standing before Yahweh somewhere on earth. You getting this? Great. Right. You getting this? They're standing before Yahweh. Well, they can't be standing before his throne. Right? Before Yahshua. So, Eliyahu was before Yahshua. Yochanan was preserved. We know that he was not taken to heaven. So they are standing before Yahweh at Daryl as the true olive tree, oh. as the two menorahs. Oh. And now what is a menorah? Go to Revelation 1.20. Go to Revelation 1.20. What is a menorah in, in the book of Revelation? What does a menorah represent? Exactly. 
You'll see that in Revelation 1.20. Look at Giliana 1.20. Giliana 1.20. The mystery of the seven kochavim stars that you saw in my right hand are the seven golden menorahs. The seven kochavim are the seven teaching overseers of the seven Israelite congregations. And the seven menorah, menorahs that you saw are seven Israelite congregations. One menorah, one congregation, symbolically in the book of Revelation. Two menorahs, two congregations. Daryl, four menorahs represent four congregations. So the two menorahs are the two congregations, Judah and Ephraim, the house of Judah, the house of Israel, both sending one standing living witness. You can't be a witness in the tribulation unless you're a living witness. You can't be a dead witness. They are living witnesses right now that will be sent. Remember that scripture in Revelation 10, 11? Mm -hmm. You shall prophesy again. Yeah. John, you're not dying. Because if you die, you can't prophesy again. You will survive, Patmos. You will be preserved with Elijah in the earth. And you will prophesy again. As one of the two olive trees. In the Great Tribulation. Brethren, two things. The two witnesses are alive right now. Right now. Wow. Amazing. Wow. Where did they go? I wonder where they are. Any sightings? Is anybody else teaching this? Is it possible that some of these extraterrestrial sightings? Uh oh. That some of these UFO sightings have something to do with this? I don't know. Wait a minute. Say that again? I don't know. What did you say? Is it possible that some of these UFO sightings yeah, yeah. have something to do with this? I don't know. But here's the thing. Yochanan is alive. Eliyahu is alive on the earth, standing before Yahweh as a living witness. And the reason they're hidden is, if we knew where they were, what do you think the end time beast would do? Okay. The same ones who took the Taj Mahal, right. Right. who put the Taj Mahal under seas. What do you think they would do to these two end time witnesses? Yep. The same thing they're going to do once they're manifest. Right. The reason they're concealed is they cannot be manifest because they would be killed prematurely. Right. Not until the time. So I'm going to do two things. Two things. I'm going to remind you that the two witnesses are alive. And then I'm going to take questions, which I normally don't do. Well, because I like being put on the spot, especially when I create a lot of spots, they need to be wiped away. And because our sister Raina is on a sabbatical, a one week sabbatical, <laughs> and brother, brother Bruno is still, what is that stuff that he uses for the, for the boys? <laughs> What's that stuff? You pray, you pray. <laughs> so Brother Bruno is um, not yet ready to present his gift to the world. <laughs> we were talking about earlier. Not right now. His voice. So we're going to entertain questions. Now, if there are no questions on this subject, then we can stare at each other because it's a little bit early. Okay, so I need to have some questions. If you're in our radio audience and you'd like to email me a question, don't do it. I mean, go ahead and do it. That's fine. But please make it on the subject. Don't ask me, you know, where is China in the book of Malachi. Yeah, please don't ask me, is Sri Lanka or is Bangladesh prophesied in the end times? Please. We will ignore you. Don't take me there. All right? If you have a word from Yahweh, you know, that it's going to be an assassination, uh, you know, in 2013, please. So not just stick to today's topic. <clears throat> if you have any questions, I don't mind being challenged with respect on today's topic. I'm going to give you the opportunity to have your own radio show. Okay, you're going to be on radio. Wow. Wow. Anyone with a question? What about question. What about Enoch? Enoch? Yeah, I'm going to ask about Enoch too. <laughs> Next week. Next week. Yeah, well, you mentioned you were going to talk about uh, Enoch or Hanok next week. If, if it's too, uh, I guess we'll ask another question. But 
that that does raise a question. I'm 